Hello and welcome to Baiju's Exam Prep IAS. Welcome to today's daily quiz segment. And let us quickly have a look at the questions that we shall be analyzing today. Now the first question on the screen is a set of two statements that talk about ISS, the International Space Station. The first statement says the ISS was developed and built by five space agencies which include NASA, that's from the US, Roscosmos, that's the Russian space agency, European space agency, Japan, as well as Canadian space agency. This is a correct statement. Let's remember, the ISS, in fact, is the largest space station that has ever been built. Let's remember that it actually has been assembled and structured, maintained by these five nations through their space agencies. Now, it is situated and maintained in the lower or the low Earth orbit. And let's also remember that its main purpose is to perform microgravity and space environment experiments. Hence, the first statement here is valid. Looking at the second statement, the Tiangong Space Station is a permanent crude station constructed by South Korea. Now, indeed, Tiangyong belongs to one of an ambitious nations which is trying to constantly create better space exploration initiatives, but this country is not South Korea. In fact, Tiangyong is a permanently crude station that had been created by China. It is constructed and maintained by the Chinese Space Agency. Hence, the second statement here becomes invalid, making A your correct answer. Why did we choose this question for discussion today? That is due to an article in the Economic Times which says Japan moon lander has revived after facing long freezing cold lunar nights. Now, Japan's moon lander, which is often abbreviated as SLIM, smart lander for investigating moon, it has been able to survive after about two weeks of exposure to extreme cold lunar nights. Hence, this was the news released. This, let's remember, had also made Japan as the fifth soft landing country on the moon. With this, let's proceed with the second question on the screen. It says, what is Bombix Mori? Now, this word is often used when we talk about agriculture, animal husbandry. What does it stand for? A. Indian banyan tree species. Is it B. Indian guava variety? Is it C. Domesticated variety of silkworm? Or is it D. Unicellular type of algae? So, here the correct answer is C. Indeed, it is a domesticated silkworm. It's very often used when we talk about India's silk production. Let's remember India is one of the largest silk producing nations in the world. And within India, it is in fact Karnataka that produces maximum silk. On that note, let's remember that silkworm which is referred to as Bombix Mori, is of a particular economic value because it is a primary producer of silk in the country. And C becomes your valid answer. The reason for the question was a PIB release which spoke about how the Prime Minister of India has recently inaugurated the Bharat Text 2024, which is a platform to highlight India's unique, remarkable capabilities in the field of textile industry. And with this, let's proceed with the third question of the day. It talks about which of the following committees suggested a private participation to be allowed in various railway infrastructure projects in India? Was it A. L. M. Singhvi Committee or was it B. Sundar Committee? Could it be C. Radha Krishna Commission or is it D. Bibek Deb Roy Committee? In this case, let's remember clearly the answer is D. Through elimination, this question can be done very easily. Let's remember back in 2015, the Bibek Deb Roy Committee had suggested several initiatives in order to promote and boost the cap capability of India's railway sector. 
In that note, it had also spoken about allowing private participation or the PPP model in order to improve railway capacity, D being your correct answer. Now, A clearly, LM Singhvi committee, it speaks about reforms of Panchayati Raj, revitalizing India's Panchayati Raj institutions. So therefore, it was not related to railway at all. Talking about B, Sundar committee. Now, Sundar committee was created to talk about road safety initiatives. Similarly, the Radha Krishna Commission, that's option C, it spoke about improvements in India's higher education segment, in India's university education segment. So through elimination, we know the correct answer here will be D. Now, why was this question highlighted? It is due to an article in the Hindu newspaper which talks about how the Prime Minister has launched Amrit Bharat Station Scheme by initializing 554 stations railway platforms across the country and this also includes railway overbridges, underbridges. The idea is to revamp, to revitalize India's railway stations, to give them a facelift. And now with that, let's proceed with the fourth question. It is a set of two statements. The first statement says GCC, the Gulf Cooperation Council. It is a political and economic alliance of six Middle Eastern countries. Is that true? Indeed it is, because talking about the GCC, let's remember back in 1981, the GCC was created as an initiative to promote better political, better economic interests for a group of six countries situated in the Middle Eastern region. So the first statement is valid. Second statement, UAE, Qatar and Iraq are members of the GCC. This is a misplaced statement because when we talk about the six members of the GCC, we often talk about, yes, the UAE. We do talk about Qatar. We talk about Saudi Arabia. We talk about Oman. We talk about Kuwait. Besides, we talk about Bahrain. But Iraq is not a member. Hence, second statement becomes invalid, making A as your valid answer. And now to why was the question picked up? Again, a PIB release which speaks about how Oil India has said yes for organizing a global partner road show. It is a confluence, a blend where energy and opportunity will come together, creating volumes of opportunity for India's oil and natural gas segment and this will be conducted in Abu Dhabi. With this, let's have a look at today's PYQ coming to you from 2017. It talks about the digital single market strategy. This term has often been seen in the news with connection to which of the following? Is it A, ASEAN? Is it B, BRICS? Is it the European Union or is it the G20 Forum? So here clearly, the correct answer is EU. Because when we talk about the dig digital single market strategy, we are talking about the ambition to create better competition for the EU nations in the area of digitization. Let's remember that this is a market that was created with the intention of ensuring better access for consumers as well as business houses in Europe or across Europe, various European countries to online goods and services. Hence, C here becomes absolutely valid answer. And now let's quickly discuss the fact of the day. Now, we are talking about a disease, a disease which tomorrow could pose another threat of being zoonotic in nature. We are talking about the disease known as chronic wasting disease. Now, the word chronic is often misunderstood in medical science. It is referred to as something that has less impact on health but that's not what it means chronic in fact means something that's very long term something that begins slowly but it ends up staying for a very very long time talking about some very very common chronic disorders in humans today we talk about the diabetes insulin resistance or hypertension similarly here we are talking about a disease that impacts the animal species many of them 
and it also therefore poses a huge threat of tomorrow assuming the shape of a zoonotic disorder that could easily spread among humans. So we are talking about the chronic wasting disease CWD. Remember this is also often referred to as zombie deer disease. Scientists have often been raising an alarm about it. They are worried that what if this is the new epidemic of tomorrow. Now this disease is typically a neurological disorder which affects majority of deer species and other animal species belonging to the same genre, belonging to the same family of deer. This is typically caused by a misfolded or a very, very unstructured protein that is referred to as a prion. What is a prion? Now, a prion is something that causes disturbance in normal functioning of the brain. It creates some kind of a hap hazard development in the normal brain fold structure. So therefore, it leads to a range of crippling symptoms, you know, and this is a very contagious disease, let's remember. Let's also remember that it is transmitted very easily among a particular animal species. Now, this is very, very concerning because, as I said, not only animals, but tomorrow it could pose a massive risk of spreading into humans due to consuming meat of the animals which are impacted by this disease. Now, remember, similar news are also coming up about bird flu, avian influenza. Very often we hear that the government puts a moratorium. It puts a ban on consuming non-vegetarian food. The purpose is that whenever such pandemics or such epidemics increase, it could be bird flu, it could be swine flu, it becomes more dangerous. That what if this could trigger it immediate leak into human species. That is something we are talking about today also. Now this happens sometimes among animals of all ages. Majority of them will die without even showing some major symptom. So therefore it is also a cause of concern to scientists and veterinarians who are investigating in the issue. Since there is no proper treatment, there is no proper vaccination, typically symptomatic management is done. Now talking about prion that is primarily responsible for triggering the disease. This is a protein basically. A protein that can trigger unhealthy structuring of healthy proteins in the brain and hence it releases a host of neurological symptoms that are very difficult to treat. And now on that note I shall take your leave for today's segment. Hope you enjoyed it. See you soon with many such exciting sessions in future. Thank you.